we have seen the different types of plastics and polymers and uh, <clears throat> their applications and uh, synthesis uh, uh, properties, etc. One of the major properties of most of the plastics we have discussed or polymers we have discussed is that they are non-degradable, particularly non-biodegradable and they persist in on uh, the earth, isn't it? So, uh, wherever they are dumped, they remain there, maybe on earth surface or on in the sea, wherever we go, we put the plastic, it remains there and it becomes a menace for us, isn't it? It is creating a lot of issues, both for human beings and for other living organisms. Now, in this video, we shall see how plastics can be recycled, what are the methods, etc. in brief. Now, uh, what are the benefits of uh, plastic recycling? You know, there are a lot of benefits like it will reduce environmental pollution, it will reduce the use of excess use of uh, fossil fuels like uh, uh, most of the monomers for the polymer synthesis comes from the petroleum. Uh, product okay so uh, when we take it up in excess then it will deplete and then we will not have anything more left so recycling is a solution for that we can use the same plastic again for other uh, purposes also uh, by converting it into other products and in this way we can save energy economy okay and then uh, uh, the pollution major uh, benefit is that the pollution can be reduced all right now uh, there are certain problems but related to plastic recycling difficulties like uh, from this huge uh, uh, spread of plastic we need to separate plastics differently i mean there are different types of polymers each polymer do not undergo recycling methods or we cannot use the same recycling method for all type of polymers. So we need to separate them. Okay. So from this debris, separating polymers according to their make or according to the type is very difficult. You know, that's a very big issue. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the main reason why uh, two polymers cannot be recycled together is because they may be in incompatible. Okay. Now, uh, another issue regarding recycling is when we apply temperature, some of the polymer chains may undergo degradation. Okay. So, uh, we may not uh, get the exact polymer or the polymer may get degraded and we not get the we may not get the product and uh, another issue is that the uh, product which comes out of the uh, after recycling that means the recycled product will be of a lesser quality than the virgin polymer okay the uh, pro uh, the polymer product which we get after recycling will not be of that good quality but still for uh, use like uh, flower pots, uh, then uh, flower vases at home, uh, we can use it. Then uh, uh, other uh, like uh, <clears throat> uh, pavements, okay, pavement, the uh, flooring, floor tiles, etc. can be made from recycled plastics. Except uh, uh, what I feel is uh, for, for storing foodstuffs, for carrying foodstuffs, for uh, 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 what is it uh, for packing foodstuffs we need not go for recycled plastics but for most of the other applications we can go for recycled plastics uh, so that a lot of uh, plastic waste can be avoided okay even carry bags can be made from uh, recycled plastics there is no issue of using I mean quality is not going to be of much concern over there Okay, so uh, there are difficulties and there are disadvantages, but still all these disadvantages and difficulties will be, uh, uh, will shadow the major advantage that is the environment, uh, control of environmental pollution. Okay, now we'll sh we shall see the different techniques of uh, plastic recycling. We have the mechanical recycling, we have the feedstock recycling or chemical method, then 
plastic is converted to road for used for road construction that's another recycling method and plastic to pavement blocks another recycling method the mechanical recycling is uh, uh, we are converting it uh, we are converting the plastic to another product in free feedstock recycling or chemical method the uh, we are trying to get back the monomer okay the polymer is broken down to get back the monomer the feedstock that's why it's called the feedstock recycling in certain plastics are used for uh, uh, road construction we do have a uh, lot of examples for this and even for pavement blocks we shall see one by one now mechanical recycling the various steps for mechanical recycling are transportation from the source you have to collect the plastic from the source and transport it to the recycling center from there the, the plastics must be sorted out based on the make polyethenes must be put together polypropylenes must be put together polystyrene must be put together that's the difficult part over here okay once the sorting is done properly then the rest can be done easily uh, there are different methods of sorting we shall see now then after sorting that is after separating the plastics uh, uh, into groups according to their uh, nature then we have to shred it shred it means we uh, make it into small pieces wash it well we have to thoroughly wash to remove all uh, dirt because we are going to recycle it we are going to create I mean make another product out of it after washing grind it properly and pelletize it pelletize it means you make it into small small uh, uh, tablets sort of thing pellets then compound it compounding means you are going to convert it into the required product by adding the required additives like uh, you add uh, dyes other compounding agents non-oxidant i mean antioxidants anti-aging uh, additives etc and then compound it and convert it into useful products and then market it and then use it and then again go for recycling so this one to nine continues you can take one plastic for maybe one or two recycling cycles after that it gets i mean the quality will be very very low you may not be able to get the proper properties application properties all right now in feedstock recycling, you are going to recover the feedstock from the polymer or the monomer from the polymer. So for that you can do this for pet polyamides and PU. These polymers can be used for feedstock recycling. The polymers are depolymerized. That means monomerized. They, they, they are, the polymer is depolymerized and uh, for this the processing temperature goes up to 350 degrees centigrade it is here that we have to be very careful because only those polymers which can withstand which will not undergo degradation at up to 350 in the sense the monomer will not change its property or the monomer will not decompose at 350 degrees centigrade only such polymers can be used for feedstock recycling now, once this they are depolymerized, we may get it as RDF, that is refuse derived fuel. Refuse means waste. Okay, so the, the fuel which, is, which, which we get from plastics are called refuse derived fuel or RTF. Then we may get solids or in gaseous form. Now, the uh, solid. Uh, solids which we get can be reused as fuel in cement in industries and uh, the gas is used in the system as a fuel okay so uh, uh, in effect the product from feedstock recycling is major in is mostly used as fuels okay when they burn you get a lot of heat okay so in cement industries glass industries they go for this because they require a lot of heat uh, up to thousand degrees centigrade and all they need then uh, they are converted to plastic uh, uh, to roads like polystyrenes, polypropylene, polyethenes are converted, uh, are used to, uh, during the construction of roads. roads. Okay, what they do is uh, along with the tar, instead of the tar, some amount of plastic uh, is used. These plastics are burnt, made into uh, molten state, and then mixed with the pebbles and uh, 
uh, the aggregate, okay, which was used for roads, the small, small pebbles and stones which are used for the construction of roads. To make them uh, stick together, you can use this molten plastic. Okay, uh, that's another uh, way of using this feedstock, uh, I mean, uh, way of applying feedstock, basically. Now, here you have this how this feedstock recycling is done to make construct roads. See, the plastic waste is collected, uh, and they are segregated and stored and then cleaned and then shredded into the required size, okay? The stones, the small, small, you, we call it metal pieces, isn't it? The small granite pieces. They are heated to 160 degree uh, to 170 degrees centigrade and the shredded polymer plastics, that is, shredded means those plastics which have broken down into smaller pieces. These shredded plastics are mixed together with this metal pieces or the stone pieces which are heated to 170 degrees centigrade. Okay, so instead of the tar which we use, we are using this. Okay, now this coated aggregate is mixed with hot bitumen at temperature 163 degrees centigrade and then this is spread over the road. Again, this mix is called waste plastic aggregate bitumen. Okay, so that's how plastic is used for road construction. Okay, so that is uh, the... Uh, flowchart for uh, how plastic is used or recycled and used for road construction. Now similar one is plastic to pavement blocks. Now here we don't uh, degrade uh, much the polymer. Okay. Now this is called plaston block technology. Plaston. Plast stands for plastic. Okay. Stone. Okay. You, we have the uh, interlock bricks. So instead of the uh, interlock brick, which is made up of completely cement, we can go for plaster, that is use plastic also. Okay, so you mix it, it is a plaster is a mixture of waste, plastic and stone. Again, they are found to be five times stronger than cement, concrete block. Okay, so uh, uh, we know that when we uh, pave our, uh, um, I mean, uh, when we uh, put on or lay the uh, interlock bricks, after some time it starts breaking up, isn't it? When heavy vehicles or uh, a load is applied, it starts breaking. So if you use plastone, you can have, you can, I mean, this problem can be solved so because plastone can withstand more pressure and also it can resist, it is water resistant. Now that's a disadvantage as far as uh, Paving such plastons at home is concerned because we always say that water is to be seeped to the uh, earth, I mean seeped down to the underground. So this will not perc uh, allow water to percolate through. Okay, so wherever that is required, you can go for plaston. Again, you can see the quantity of plastic each plaston uses. It uses 300 plastic carry bags and 4 to 6 pet bottles each plastron block so that's a huge quantity so one plastron block uses 300 plastic carry bags and four to six pet bottle means it's quite good okay and uh, uh, an advantage of pl using plastron it is lightweight okay so laying will be uh, less uh, strenuous okay strain for laying plastron will be less okay so out outdoor pavements can be done using this even uh, uh, common public toilets, the, the floors of public toilets can be used for this public, wherever public places, you, pavements, you can use plastons. We can even uh, lining of canals and we can even think of lining of the uh, fish ponds and, and uh, etc. which we have at home using plastons. Now, <laughs> you can try all these. So, uh, converting plastic to plaston is a very good uh, method of recycling the plastics okay now uh, we need to discuss about the how the re pet, pet bottles, bottles are polyesters i mean uh, polyethylene tartalates are polyesters so uh, we can convert these pet bottles to uh, polyester fibers and can be used for making fabrics 
So uh, that's a very useful technique of recycling pet bottles because the, a lot of quantities of pet bottles are thrown to the uh, oceans and earth surface uh, after use and they cannot be reused also. Pet bottles cannot be reused. Now, uh, how do we do that? How is these pet bottles converted to uh, polyester fibers? Now, the used pet bottles are collected and then uh, sorted out and then uh, it is, uh, uh, you, I mean, taken for washing. Okay, and then spinning and drawing, that means they are uh, converted into fibers by spinning it and making it into thin fibers by drawing it out. Alright, now these fibers are then made into filament and then weaved to oh, uh, make it into cloths and then which are converted into dress materials. Okay, so some of the <laughs> polyester clothings which you get it from shops maybe uh, are made from recycled pet bottles. And that's a good way of converting uh, the waste into useful product. Okay, now there is nothing bad or nothing wrong in using it or uh, nothing unclean in using such recycled, recycled clothings because uh, they are cleaned properly and they are converted into fibers. Okay, the origin, it looks like the original polyester fibers and these fibers are then dyed, dyed and made into threads and then we then convert it into clothings. Okay, so this is a good way of uh, converting um, plastic waste into useful product. Maybe you can think of this as a, uh, what is it called, as a, uh, uh, a self, uh, small scale industry sort of thing. You understand the technology, uh, you get the raw material free of cost. That's a very good advantage of setting up such an industry. Okay, the raw material, the used pet bottles can be obtained free of cost or by paying very little amount uh, as uh, uh, purchasing cost. Now, you may have to uh, think of establishing all these, that is sorting, flaking, spinning, etc. These machineries may cost a bit, but then ultimate uh, profit what I feel is will be quite good. You need not go for weaving or tailoring that can be done by uh, textile industries but making of fibers up to making of fibers of filaments you can do. Okay so uh, some of you can think of uh, setting up uh, pet recycling industries. Okay not many we find in India such recycling industries just try it out. Uh, like you, you, the governments ask for startups, isn't it? Uh, apply for one startup using this. You may, you may be su successful, and <laughs> so try it out. Okay, so that's a very good method of recycling pet bottles. Now, uh, I've told you that uh, for the recycling, uh, one of the very difficulties. Very, I mean, one of the difficulties which people come across why for recycling is that uh, sorting out, segregating the plastic according to their make. Now plastic identification codes help to uh, segregate polymers or plastics according to the uh, material or the according to the compound from which it is made. Okay, you may be familiar with these symbols in your uh, uh, plastic uh, uh, what is it? Plastic commodities. Okay, so just uh, you buy a plastic bottle or a uh, storage container. Uh, at the bottom of it, you will find such triangular uh, and uh, a number inside. So each number, the triangle shows of that recycle, reduce, reuse triangle. The number shows the uh, type of polymer which is made up of. Okay, number one is for pet. 2 is for HDPE polythenes, uh, high density polythene, 3 for PVC, 4 for LDP low density polythene, 5 for polypropylene, 6 for polystyrene and 7 for other polymers which do not fall on in this. So accordingly you can separate the polymers and then use for recycling. 
okay whichever method you want you can go for that because if you are going to convert uh, I mean, if, if if you are going to set up a pet bottle recycling industry, there will be bottles made up of PVC, LDP, PP, etc. You cannot use those here. So you need a good sorting technique. And this identification code is a very good or a very useful uh, code to separate pollen plastics according to their make. Okay. Now this was introduced in 1988 by uh, Society of Plastic Industry, USA, SPI. Okay, later on this was, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, the, the uh, purpose of the identification code was modified, but originally as the purpose why SPI introduced this code was to provide a, a consistent national system to facilitate recycling of post-consumer plastics. So that's, even now this is the main aim, to recycle the, uh, to help to recycle the post-consumer plastic, that, that is after-use plastics, how do we recycle? So for that, that is for sorting. Okay, so the number refers to the type of plastic which is used in making that product. So you can, uh, the recyclers can sort the products based on the plastic it is made from. That's the main advantage of this. And also the consumer, they can see the number and then uh, check, say whether they need to use it or not. So for example, they, uh, uh, the polymers up to p uh, up to the number five you need not you cannot use it reuse it but uh, polypropylene and pro polystyrene can be so bottles made up of polypropylene and polystyrene can be used up. but pet bottles etc cannot must not be uh, uh, brought or bought for storing water etc okay so that's another advantage of having this plastic identification code now, the, uh, see, you can see here, this is the code icon, PET, PET polyethylene terthalate. They are used for you, uh, storing milk, I mean, used for making milk containers, soft drink bottles, etc. Okay, and then after recycling, they are converted into carpets, polar freeze, the way I told you, the it is converted into polyester fibers. Okay, and remember, these, these, Pet bottles must not be used. Once it is used, you throw it away. Okay, it must not be reused. We you we do have that habit of uh, using the same bo pet bottle again, particularly to carry water. Okay, you must be careful. Don't do that. Okay, similarly, HDP, poly high density polyethylene. These are the uh, uh, areas wherein we use HDP and after recycling they are converted into flow tiles, pens, detergent bottles etc. Okay, they are also, they, these materials also must not be used again. Okay, then we have the PVC polyvinyl chloride, never use these for storing foodstuffs, it has got chlorine, it is highly toxic. Okay, these are the applications like pipes. Mainly they are used for pipes, fencing, flooring, etc. Okay, and then uh, after recycling, they can again be used for pens, uh, pipes as pipes, pen, uh, fencing agents, etc. They are also used for panelings. Okay, uh, mud flaps of uh, our vehicles, etc. can be used. Then uh, LDPE, low density polyethylene. Okay. So shopping bags, the, the carry bags, the polythene bag, uh, plastic covers which you get from shops, mostly they are made up of LDPE. Okay, uh, so they can be converted into flow tiles. Now this is the reason why the uh, government insists on, I don't know exactly the thickness of the plastic must be about 3.3 mm or so. Uh, very thin LDP cannot be recycled. So that's why they insist on the thickness. Uh, it, uh, of uh, the plastic covers. It must be of above, I think it is 3 microns, I'm not sure, must take it out. Okay, then only LDP can be recycled, otherwise it will undergo decomposition. Okay, now polypropylene and polystyrene you can use, reuse and they are made up of, I mean they are used for uh, uh, making drinks, straws, ketchup bottles, uh, even water bottles are there. You have water bottles made up of PP, food containers are there, and polystyrene, uh, 
are disposable plates and cups are made up of polystyrene. They're nothing but thermocols, isn't it? Okay, so a lot of applications you find from polystyrene, they all can be re recycled. Okay, then uh, other uh, polymers all are put together as number seven. Okay, the nylons, the thermoform sheet strapping, etc. are put under number seven. Okay, so uh, basically plastic, identi plastic identification code help us to know what material it is made up of and accordingly we can sort it for recycling, accordingly we can buy it for our purpose, personal purpose. So I recommend that if you are buying food storage uh, plastic containers or water storing plastic containers, go for PP and PS, that is go for the uh, number 5 and number 6. Okay, don't go for four and below. All right, so hope this much is clear to you. You may get, uh, uh, you may have to answer for uh, questions on plastic identification codes and recycling of plastics. In, even if you don't get a question, you must know what are the methods of recycling so that you can help out to save Mother Earth. All right, so thank you. Thank you for listening.